Hi everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Out of Diagnostics. Today we have a special late night episode on a BMW 2016 uh, BMW 535, the X drive, all wheel drive. And you can see it's kind of torn apart in the front. And the owner's here, my friend Rick from Ohio. Hey Rick, he owned the uh, Nissan Maxima, which uh, he upgraded to this BMW. And what's the customer complaint today, Rick? The headlight has condensation in it. Oh boy. So, yep, there's water inside the headlight housing. And if you uh, ignore this and leave it, well guess what? It's going to get in there and destroy expensive modules. This thing is a fancy headlight, probably Xenon. Got the adaptive module in there. So water gets in and can corrode modules. And this is, we didn't look up the price, but probably not cheap, right Rick? Right. So, so how are we going to attack this? What, what, what's, the, what's the game plan? What do we want to do? Well, we want to inject smoke or bubbles into it. Okay, so find the leak. Find the leak. And then? Seal it. And then seal it with some silicone. And dry it out, obviously, before sealing it. Uh, to do that, we need some tools. So, smoke machines. I've had this OTC leak tamer for a few years now. It's great. And I just got this baby on Amazon, the AutoLine Pro. So let's look at both machines, run them through a couple tests. I want to see how they perform. Then we'll use it on the headlight to hopefully find the leak. So this AutoLine Pro, little tiny smoke machine, I think it's too good to be true. I just bought it on Amazon. I put it in my Amazon store under fluids testing. Go down here, here it is. So right now you can get it for 200 bucks. The OTC Leak Tamer is $1,200. Huge difference in price. And I want to test them on the bench to see how they perform. And then we'll use them on the BMW headlight. So what are the differences here? So this is kind of an old school machine. You need to hook it up to a battery source to power it up. And you need to hook it up to compressed air for it to, you know... Uh, do the flow test. So you need two things to use this thing. And it's huge. This little guy has a rechargeable lithium ion battery and a built in little air pump. So it's all self contained. This is amazing if it works. So let's run it through a couple tests. Uh, first thing I want to do is obviously power them up and see how much smoke they put out. Smoke you know, output is what a smoke machine is supposed to do. Then I want to hook them up to my pressure transducer and measure how much pressure these things put out. We don't want too much pressure because you know the headlight housing can crack, fuel tank can expand, you only want a couple PSI. So let's uh, do these tests and see how these things perform. First, let's start with the old reliable, the OTC Leak Tamer. So I have it hooked up to my uh, battery supply here. No, just a voltage, you know, uh, voltage supply. So this thing can go up to 5 amps at 12 volts. So let's turn it on. So right now it's drawing 1.2 amps. And turn on the flow. Look, it's blinking. It's drawing over 5 amps and we're down to 5 volts. So this voltage supply cannot keep up because the maximum is 5 amps. That kind of sucks. So let's, uh, let's actually use a real battery to power this thing. This, so this draws quite a few amps. If you're on the vehicle and keys off and you're drawing whatever from the vehicle battery, well that's not good long term. You're going to draw down the battery. This thing apparently can go for over an hour putting out smoke just from the internal battery, which is amazing. All right, so I have my amp clamp down here, and we're going to turn this sucker on. Okay, now it's on. 18 amps, holy crap. This thing is power hungry. So here's the smoke. 
puts out a ton of smoke. We can dial down the flow control like that. It's still drawing 15 amps. So let's shut that sucker off. It does put out a lot of smoke, but it does draw a lot of current. Now let's plug this into my pressure transducer and see how many PSI puts out when you turn the uh, flow on. Okay, so pressure transducer is on. This is the 265 PSI unit with the included adapter through a little line. There's a smoke machine. So on PicoScope 6, we want to set up the scale, choose our probe, 265 PSI unit, and I have all these probes preset, so plus or minus 15 PSI. Let's turn the sucker on. We can even drop the scale to minus 16 to 4. So not much pressure at all. Let's measure that. So about 1 PSI. Okay, so we're done testing this guy. Let's turn on the AutoLine Pro. Alright, AutoLine Pro. So, very easy. First, you fill it up with the included oil up to the max mark through you know this port. And then just press the button. It lights up and just starts pumping. Let's see how much smoke this thing puts out. I don't know what's up with our flow meter. It is putting out smoke. So it has just air or both smoke and air. So apparently with the smoke, that's for leak checking. And then if you want to find the size of your leak, you switch to the just the air mode. And then the flow gauge works. Okay, now let's hook up to the pressure transducer. Run that. They're starting at zero. No flow. So it went from zero to about one. Okay, so one PSI. It's regulated. That's nice. Let's try it on the smoke mode. This is about 2 PSI. Let's try the air mode again. Off. So in air mode is about 1 PSI and smoke mode is about 2 PSI. So very good. It's regulated. Now let's try it on the headlight. Alright, so for testing the headlight, you have to block off all of the little vents where the smoke is escaping because you want to check how airtight the housing is. So the smoke machine's plumbed into one of the vent holes. You know, this uh, tube fits in snugly. Then there's another vent hole which I put a cap on right here. So let's turn on the smoke machine and see what happens. You can see the housing is filling with smoke. Now again, this the smoke output is significantly less than the leak tamer. However, I think it can still do the job. So there's smoke coming out of this connector. 
and they do include a little pen light to help you see. You guys see that on camera? See the smoke coming out? So we need to block off this as well. Uh, let me do that with a latex glove. Okay, so what we're going to do is block off this with my glove and we'll see if the smoke finds another way out. Now, it's starting to come out of this little gap right here. The pressure is building, and this is not quite a very tight seal, so what we're going to do is put a clamp to squeeze this lid down, get that O-ring to seal, and now the smoke machine should build some pressure. And we can check that by, if I release the latex glove, Rick, you can kind of get the microphone on there. You can hear it's like, so it's definitely, now it's airtight, and now we can look for the leak. Now the leak can be very small, and at first we couldn't find it. So the next plan of attack is keep the smoke machine running. We can even put it in the uh, just regular air mode and just spray soapy water along where you know the clear housing meets the plastic housing. That's where I suspect the leak will be. And right here, with soapy water and the smoke machine, bingo. So this took, you know, maybe 15 minutes to look around and find the bubbles. So the water kind of channels down here and gets sucked right into that little hole where the bubbles are coming out. Make sure the uh, my glove is on there. So we need pressure inside the headlight. Where is it coming out now? Seal that, seal that. Hmm. There it is. So right, right that seal, we have bubbles. So what we're going to do is clean that out real well, put some silicone on it, and take the, uh, the bulbs out and just dry this thing with compressed air, try to get all the water out. This headlight should be as good as new at least for a while. So we'll run a bead right through here. So overall, I am super impressed with this little smoke machine. It blows me away. And let's see, how is the, uh, the battery doing? It's still full charge. Unbelievable. This is new technology here. So I'm going to be using this now for my uh, leak checking, and it's super portable. You can carry like five of these. If you're going to carry one of those, you don't need to hook it up to a battery and drain your battery at 20 amps. That's a huge draw. And um, you don't need compressed air source. Where in the field, this is absolutely fantastic. All right, so we got the area cleaned off. The leak was right here. And you can even see, if I put a little pick in here, the black sealant is coming away from the clear lens. Right there, there's a gap. So we're going to flow Permatex windshield and glass sealant probably all the way from here down to here to um, make sure the whole area is sealed up. Let it dry out. And then um, what we could do is first disassemble the light and blow it out so there's no condensation in here first. Then do the sealing so we don't disturb that while the headlight's drying out. So we're trying to figure out the best way to dry out this housing. You can see there's water droplets everywhere. This is the control module. It's got a little water on it. No corrosion yet. Luckily, I mean the headlight still works. 
So, got the bulb out here. We don't want to mess with the light bulbs themselves, so I think we'll just circulate air through. Maybe with the uh, compressed air and just try to... We gotta dry everything out. So maybe set up a fan for a while. Um, this, the, you can't really get in there and wipe that stuff off. We just have to circulate some air. Alright, so first step is to get some compressed air through the side here. So we're focusing on the lens and just start blowing the water. spot and try to just you can see some dripping out so this is going to be a process once we get most of the droplets out we'll set up a fan and just try to dry the rest of it out and uh, hopefully and then seal it up with the silicone I think it should be in good shape so to dry out this headlight housing we've got a fire going here in the stove and a fan blowing through here and it just kind of comes out here circulate the air almost all dry in one hour you see just a couple little drops remaining so let's um let's spread the silicone around the perimeter and then dry it for a little bit longer it should be in good shape all right here's the magic stuff i'm thinking about doing the entire perimeter here and this, it's flowable silicone, so it will flow into all the cracks. So just make sure you have enough spread out, and it'll do the trick. So we'll go from, uh, just spread a bead all the way around. This headlight should be better than factory. All right. We did an amazing job spreading the flowable silicone around the entire perimeter. Made sure there are no gaps. Like I said, this is a miracle product all the way around. On that seam, like I said, this is better than factory sealant. This stuff will last forever. So let's keep the fan on there, dry out these last couple little drops, and put everything back together. Back in business. Sweet.